So sometimes you just need your go-to text effects. So I thought in today's video, let me show you basically my three text effects that I use basically 95% of the time. There's always a room and a time or a place for like, you know, a really fancy, fun, exploratory text effect. But for many, many of you guys, you guys are gonna have a text effect that you just go to for most of your projects. And that is what I wanna show you guys in today's video. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. And uh, just before that, do not forget about the first link in the description down below, the everything pack. Basically get all of my 31 projects on that one purchase plus every single other product that I come out with on Selfie for absolutely zero dollars which means free. Discord community is always popping. The exclusive stuff is always fun and cool. So don't forget, if you want to be involved, get involved. It's that simple. So yeah, let's go ahead and actually get this thing started. So first one we're gonna end up doing is this one right here. This is basically gonna be the make it simple, but like have a little something, something that makes it pop. A lot of this, by the way, that I'm gonna be teaching guys today is gonna more or less be very dependent on your color theory. So like what I mean by that is, I'm obviously in a white background with like an offset white. So take that for granted. You have to make sure you tweak your colors in this theory, but more or less things of the, the way we're gonna apply these things are gonna be the same. This first color that I have here is a nice little deeper blue. It's not pure black, because I think pure black is a killer when it comes to design theory and like using solid blacks and solid whites. It's just not the way to go in my opinion if I'm looking to like make it pop. And if I were to double click on this to get into the layer styles, the first thing that we're gonna end up putting on this is an inner shadow. Now the inner shadow itself are gonna have these as settings, right? 100% opacity, it's gonna be on normal. We're gonna take the, talk about the color in a quick second, but the angle's at 90, this is at three, zero choke, zero size. That way we just get this very, very simplistic little idea of uh, the light kind of just falling just a little bit below the actual top of the text. And of course the color for this should basically be whatever color you have here and move this baby up all the way to the top somewhere in the middle. And that'll give you a pretty good color for your idea here for the inner shadow, okay? The next thing we're end up doing for this one in specific is a nice little satin. Now satin is always a hit or miss for some people. I do have my blend mode on multiply and it's a black color for this instance. I'm not even sure multiply even matters for this since it's black, but I do have it on multiply just in case I wanna go ahead and say, yo, I want a, a little bit of a hue in here, not just pure black. Uh, I have to lower and, and increase this opacity up a little bit, but for most, it's just gonna be black, 15% opacity, 90 angle, 50 distance, 70 size. And this will basically just give you a tiny bit of like shading. It makes the text effect look less flat. Obviously if I turn it on and off, you can see the full color is like the similar color that we chose in the beginning, right? But the satin just gives a nice sort of little shading around it. Like we, you know, we're like really meticulous and thought about we're replacing it. And it looks pretty good in my opinion. I always like to add a little bit of satin just to give it a little bit something, something. And then last but not least for this specific example, I'm gonna use a drop shadow. Now this drop shadow, you might, I just turned it on and it does have the effects on it, uh, which are white, 100% opacity, 90 angle, two distance, zero, zero, but you won't even notice it really until I zoom in a little bit and you can notice it right here, right? Now, I think it's a little bit more noticeable if you, of course, had like a darker background and it'll just sort of like pop a little bit more. And it just gives you that nice idea of like a subtle 3D effect and more or less just something I think it should be added, right? I think drop shadow in this case, where you know, let's just say we added a new one, right? And then this new one, we make it black. And after we make it black, we increase the size a little bit lower, the distance down kind of thing and do this kind of thing. No, no good, not necessary. But like if you even did do it on like two opacity or so, it just pops a little bit more. And I think it just genuinely makes it the text effect. It's super, super subtle, but just makes it look a tiny bit good. But you don't need that second and last drop shadow, just that white one right here. And now to finalize this thing, we're gonna make a new layer. Right click, clipping mask this new layer, right to this layer right here. So this is gonna be our glow light. And on this glow light, we're gonna take our brush, right, and right click, make my size a pretty good amount, or I can just hold Alt and move my uh, mouse left and right, or up and down for the hardness, which the hardness should be at 0%. A nice big size brush. We're gonna choose the color, choose this color here, and we're gonna go right over here or so. Basically, whatever your background color is for the actual text, right? So mine is right here. I'm gonna kind of move this diagonally into the white, uh, but not so much white where it's just gonna be a tiny bit like with a little bit of hue in it, right? So I go ahead and just do it now. Nice little click, click, click a few times, maybe like two or three times. And just like that, you got yourself a very simple text effect that I think just works every time. But more or less, that is the first effect. Let's go ahead and hop into the second effect. For the next one here, we just basically have this guy right here, which is a, a it's kind of an iteration of the first one that you guys basically saw. But just in case 
the text needed just a tiny bit more love and 3D aspect to it, or you just felt like it was a little bit too empty or flat, that's where this guy comes in handy. For this specific background, like again, the setup, the color scheme, and all that good stuff will have to be tweaked depending on your own stuff, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna double click on this layer, bring it to our layer styles, and the first one we're gonna actually choose is the inner shadow once again, right? Now the color itself, and all the effects, 300, 100% opacity, 90 angle, do stay the exact same. The color, again, is a color that's down here, whatever, move it up to the middle, makes it look good. Now, inner glow is something a little bit more different, right? So this is 100%, zero normal. The actual color should be a similar color or basically the same color as the uh, little inner shadow we just did, right? And then from here, you press OK. You can do it on softer, edge, 100 choke, one size, or we can tweak this a little bit more depending on, at the end, I would say, depending on your, your preference on that. Of course, satin once again. So again, we can do at 15 opacity, multiply, doesn't really matter. Black color, 50, and then size we'll put at 70, and that'll be pretty good. So last but not least, which actually makes this effect are these two different drop shadows. Now the first drop shadow, again, is a similar white, uh, 100 opacity, 90 angle, 200 zero, zero for the spreader, all that good stuff. So that'll set us up with that little white bar right at the bottom of here, right? But then lastly, we're gonna add in one another drop shadow. You can just click this little plus button right here if you don't have a second one, obviously. And on this duplicated one, make sure it's on the bottom. You can do that by just clicking this little up arrow or in, for this instance, click it down, right? And then once you have it on the bottom, your actual blend mode for this is gonna be on normal. Your color is gonna be on this nice sort of grayish tone. You can get a little, you know, you can get a little fun with it. If you wanna like do it like a, a gray that has a tiny bit of like hue of color in there, that way it kind of flirts with your color theory a little bit more. 100% opacity, 90 angle, distance at 25, 100 spread, one size, and as you see right here, this is basically the effect that you guys see up here without, wait for it, new layer, flipping mask, your glow layer, you take your brush, you click on your color, you find a nice color that's right around here, you press okay, and then you just click a few times. Oh, I guess before that, because I do, oops, I put on the wrong one. Oh, there you go, that, Never mind. I was gonna say if I put a, if, I, if you put a color overlay at any point in your text and you try to click mask something to it, that's why you can't see it for the record. I thought that's what happened, but I just simply forgot that's not the right layer. Yeah, the glow layer on the text layer, just like so, you click a few times, and we'll lower this opacity just a little bit as well though. Now, if you're gonna say to yourself, hey, Sesso, I don't want it to be like, you know, super white toned with like a, a little bit of color theory in there or a little bit of color in there, hue, you can just double click on this and change the actual glow for this to whatever you really want. I mean, anything could look pretty cool. If you ask me, it's super, super flexible. Trust me when I say like, when I was just talking about color theory and these are just the base of the color schemes, that's what I mean. I mean, I think all these in my opinion look pretty dope. Like this, for instance, looks pretty good. Press okay twice. And then let's just say to yourself, you wanna go, hey, so I don't know about the inner glow. I don't really see it. You can move the size up if you want to, right? Or you can go a gradient, right? And I'll choose this gradient. I'll choose this little pinkish tone that we chose, uh, chose for the actual color here. And then we can just make this flow into, I mean, the pink looks good. I was gonna say we can change this and make this a different color to sh like fade into it. But I don't think you can actually do that with inner glow. We can do that with inner shadow, I believe, but not inner glow. But regardless, you can make this pink instead of blue or whatever color you want. And uh, sort of, yeah, push that highlight even more. Add some complementary colors in there. Press OK, press OK again. And you got yourself again, like a really cool, fun text effect. And uh, this one, to me, in my opinion, I use a lot as well but like variations of it. But this one for me, it's just a, a simple go-to if I don't want to go into like a Cinema 4D or a Blender or even like use a 3D feature in Photoshop and I want to keep it sort of like 2D-esque or illustrated in that sense, this is what I would end up doing personally. Also, if you want to stretch it just a tiny bit more, you can do some old school, another new layer above the glow layer. You take a little slash going through this with a pen tool. You take your color, make it a tiny bit more. We're going to press control enter to give us a marquee selection of our pen tool and then alt backspace to quick fill in our color here. And then with this, we can play with this with any blend mode, really kind of going a little off script, but just showing you guys a little bit of customization. I'll say a little linear dodge add Then I'm gonna have to press control U on this layer here to bring up the hue and saturation table and then move this around accordingly until I find something I like. You can blend this line in a little bit more if you will, uh, if you would want to, and then just keep adding more and more highlights if that is your flavor of design. But again, that's just basically what else you can do and add into this effect. But that is the second effect. Let's hop into the third one and last one. Now for the last one here, if I zoom in, you can see this is basically the, probably the only sort of text effect that I would do on like a thumbnail setting or some kind of like party invite that I want like an incredibly bold date or an uh, incredibly bold emphasis on a certain word. This is my go-to text effect. So this one here, you can actually see it's a little bit more, uh, how do you say, has a little more pigment and brightness than all the other original ones that I started off with. I started with like a darker color here. I would start with a nice 
mid-range color here like anything in the spectrum here that kind of sits right in the middle in my opinion will feel pretty good now this one's actually pretty simple it's just basically two duplicates of textile so this one's going to be inner shadow your color that's the darkest color you'll have to remember it so this will be your darker color that kind of set the tone for the top of the text effect here so for me i have this sort of like darker bluish tone but it's basically black press ok 100 opacity 90 angle five distance 100 choke five size and then once you're done with this you can go to inner shadow or another inner shadow right duplicate little plus button here by the way if you keep forgetting if you have to make sure you put it below it though with this little arrow down here it's basically the same as i think i guys can see if i go back and forth but this one will have of course that higher or that like lighter color that you chose for your background so let's just say it's red and it's down here bring this thing up here in the middle again press ok and this is your lighter color that you're going to choose for this and now for the two drop shadows it'll be similar in the colors that you guys just went through all right so this drop shadow if i turn it on and off you can see this will basically if you got look at the t right here right it kind of flows down here into this little part right here and that bottom part is what we just added and we bring that all the way all the way down you can see it feels like it just kind of completes that look so make sure that your drop shadow and your last inner shadow are the same color just so it makes it look better and last one i see your drop shadow will be the same exact color as your first inner shadow and this is at 100 opacity 90 angle uh 25 or 24 distance 100 spread and then 24 size now for the record okay this is basically how i do a lot of my like bigger text around the whole canada so if your spread is all the way at 100 as i can see anything that you go with size the spread means if it's 100 percent you're no longer seeing a fade so it's not really a drop shadow anymore it can act like a basically an outer glow and that is how if you bring this up and you mess around your distance a little bit right you can see i brought it up more to go further down the canvas but if you kept it in the middle and bring your size up you can get that pretty cool simple little 3d look pretty quick but we'll get this at 24 24 and more or less this is the effect itself but of course always finalize it with a nice little glow layer so i'm gonna clip mask that layer click over here click over here again give us this nice little color over here maybe a little more pigmented and we'll lower this brush just a tiny bit but we're gonna click a few times and call that good if I want to press control U on the glow layer, bring up the saturation. If I ever need to customize a little bit more, if you want to do this, you could, you can make a new layer below this text layer, pick your pen tool and you can go all around these edges as tightly as possible. And as like accurately as possible. And when you get to intersections like this, I would bring your mouse just a tiny bit up. So I'm like this, like this, and you'll do this all the way around. And when you're done with this, you can connect it again, right back over here, make this as close as possible. We can just go ahead and just press control enter after we are done with the selection itself. We can make it a marquee selection with control enter. And then I'll take the same color as this background color or our uh, draw shadow color, alt backspace to fill it in, press control D to deselect. And you can get more of like a boxy look. This also depends on your font. In my opinion, this font is okay for this effect. But if you want it to look really cool, in my opinion, for this case where you actually pen tool around it, like a more scripty kind of font, a more rounded kind of font might just feel better than this. But with that, that concludes our three text effects that are hopefully incredibly easy to do and become your new staples. And uh, no more just throwing the text on with like a, with a color on it. I think that first one in the video, in my opinion, just might should just like staple it just makes it look good but hey with that being said seso hq out drop a kid to keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking crypto guys later much love peace and do not forget everything pack always over here and in the first link to description down below and uh yeah i should vlog again i feel it in my soul i just haven't